Yo, welcome to another episode of Fan Fridays, a series where we showcase off one of your guys' decks. So lately on the channel, we've been playing some slower, grindy, control-y, combo-y decks. So today we're going to speed things up a little bit and play some Rakdos 28 Bolt submitted by Anonymous. Now this is the first time ever on Fan Fridays where I don't have the username of the person who submitted the deck. But you know who you are. Comment down below. I'll pin your comment. Uh, you submitted multiple iterations of this deck. I remember you. I just don't quite remember your username. So leave a comment down below and thank you for submitting the deck. And if you'd like to submit a deck of your own, as well you can do so by leaving a comment down below or emailing me or jamming me on social media wherever I can see your comment and you might just see your deck played on a future episode of Fan Fridays. So before we get started as usual thank you very much to all my patrons you all are the reason this channel gets to keep on going and if you'd like to support the channel as well Patreon is the best place to do so. And with that let's get right into the deck tech. Hope you enjoy. This video is sponsored by MTGOnlineStore.com. For the latest and greatest of MTG apparel and accessories, everything from t-shirts to backpacks, head on over to MTGOnlineStore.com and use promo code MARIN for 10% off your next order. And it also supports the show. Link is down below. So this deck is known as Rakdos 28 Burn, and it is meant to take a more creatureless route to the burn strategy. Usually burn decks rely on their early game aggro creatures to get in the first big chunk of damage and then finish your opponent off with burn spells, but how will it fare the other way around? So bolts we are classifying as one mana for three damage, so lightning bolt is the namesake part of that, and then we got lava spike which is one mana for three damage to the face, as well as bump of the night, but if we get to the very late game for some reason, bump of the night can flash back for three more damage. And out of the more restricted Lightning Bolts, we got Rift Bolt, which is delayed a turn because it's a spend, but it still costs one mana for three damage. Same with Skewer the Critics, but you can only cast Skewer the Critics if the opponent lost life this turn, which paired with all of our other bolts should be pretty easy, unless we're in top deck mode. On to our final bolts, we got Fiery Temper and Alms of the Vein, which look like they're three mana, but if we happen to discard them some way, we can cast them for their madness cost, so that they're just one mana for three damage as well. Alms of the Vein can also gain you three life, so it's basically a Lightning Helix. So the way we're going to discard those is Faithless Looting and the Flame of Keld. So if we Faithless Loot, draw two cards, discard a couple Madness spells, that's just straight up card advantage. That is a four for one. So that's pretty awesome. That's what we're trying to do. Flame of Keld, trying to get it out when we have access to three mana so that we cast it and leave up one mana to Madness, one of our Madness burn spells. And then the Flame of Keld also has other abilities stacked onto it so that we draw two more cards the following turn to get a bunch more burn spells. But then if we wait off a turn, we can get to its ultimate ability, which if a red source of deal damage to a person permanent or player this turn it deals that much damage plus two so if we hoard a couple lightning bolts just throw them at our opponent's face after flame of Keld gets to his last ability that's 10 damage so that's a pretty good aggro card as well so as i said before we do have one place out of creatures and that is monastery swiss spear just again a little chunk of damage at the beginning because it is arguably the best burn creature because that on the first turn one damage the next turn a couple burn spells gets in for like four damage which is pretty good for one mana we got a total of 20 lands and we do kind of want to hit our land drops with this burn deck because we want to get to 3 mana for Flame of the Keld plus Madness spells. On our sideboard we got a place out of Goblin Guide. Now Goblin Guide can get in a lot of damage if your opponent has no removal for it. So we're going to bring this in against the matchups that have little to no removal. And then we got a place out of Destructive Reverie just to destroy Leyline of Sanctity because that card is annoying for us especially when all of our spells are trying to target our opponent's face. So we got Destructive Reverie as opposed to Cinder Vines because Cinder Vines does cost the mana to activate it and we don't want that hindrance. Um, we got a play set of Searing Blood and one Searing Blaze to deal with the little cheap uh, ramp dorks and little weenies and stuff and things from humans. And then I got a couple copies of Reign of Gore so that if the opponent's trying to gain life they lose that much life instead. So if our opponent's trying to bring in things like Thrag Tusk, they'll lose five life instead of gaining five life. So that's about it. I'll get the stream started and I'll see you in the first round. Before we get into the gameplay, I wanted to give a quick shout out to our brand new patron, Gonzalo, with your tier one pledge. Thank you very much, Gonzalo. I really appreciate it, and welcome to the Marination. And with that, I hope you enjoy the gameplay. And just one more quick side note, if you wanted to pick up today's deck and also support the channel, you can get the deck from PCG Player by clicking the decklist link down below. Got a game here against Tom is Black 058 with a Rakdos 28 bolt, and that is a keepable hand. That is a lot of rift bolts. Opponent's mulliganing to five. This might be our chance. What you want? Teleria West, so likely Amulet Titan. Likely Amulet Titan. 
No Swifty. All right, start on suspended Rift Bolt. I can tap the R's. I just have a hard time rolling R's. Simic Grill Chamber. Yeah, so it is Amulet Titan. Rift Bolt comes off. Blast their nose. There's a Swift Spear a little bit late to the party, but at least it showed up. Get a Blood Crib. Shocked. Swift Spear. Skewer. Alright, I think we got this one. That's a lot of bolts. We got this, Dracovo. Don't worry. We got this. Coalition Relic. Alright, let's double bump in the night. Get them to three, and we got three bolts in hand. Ain't no way opponents coming back from this one, unless they have main board ley line and they play it here. Which we still got it, because we just bolt ourselves three times. All right, Coalition Relic has a counter to take up or to take off to get a free mana, so they can go Titan here if they do have a land. But they don't have the amulet, so they couldn't actually kill us. There's the amulet, but if they were able to play Titan, they would have been able to go off and get 16 damage on us, but that's 16 is not lethal. Karn! Alright, let's see if they have a thing in the sideboard that can gain, us some, gain them some life here. Alright, opponent, let's lava spike you. And that should be game. So yeah, uh, Amulet Titan is now running Karn Lattice. A lot of things are running Karn Lattice now. Destructive Revelry, get in here. Uh, they are going to have, like, Thrag Tusk or whatever. Searing Blood's fine to hit, like, Azusa and, and uh, Sakura Tribe Scout. I like Goblin Guide here. They're going to have, like, Radiant Fountain, too. So bring in Goblin Guide. I don't know about Reign of Gore, though. Maybe it's correct to bring in Reign of Gore, but I don't think I have the time for that. So let's cut Skewers. Let's cut one Flame of Keld, a Fiery Temper, a Faithless Looting, and another Fiery Temper. Let's go like that. All right, this hand is good. Let's keep that. We got the Destructive Revelry for the Amulet. We can Faithless Loot away and a Looting and a Fiery Temper and Madness. Oh, there's a Swift Spear. So get down the Swift Spear and get in there. Allow them to chump block, but honestly, they probably won't chump block and just... Or they're probably going to think we have Searing Blaze, so they might chump block. Yeah, they do. Because if they waited until next turn we Searing Blaze and then got in, that'd be bad for them. And they also didn't want to have a... They didn't want to have a target on the battlefield for Searing Blaze. Okay, they got the Tribe Scout, but they don't have the Amulet. So what we're going to do here is... Play Stomping Grounds and Shock It, and let's loot. Prowess up. Ditch the Flame of Keld and a Fiery Temper. Let's Madness the Fiery Temper. Do I want to hit the Sakura Tribe Scout? Part of me wants to hit the Sakura Tribe Scout. Um, I do still have plenty of burn in hand. The Tribe Scout's annoying. Uh, what, what am I doing next turn? Yeah, I don't... I'm hitting the Tribe Scout. I don't want them to get their ramp. Just play an amulet. Azusa, they got their ramp anyways. Oh, they didn't have a they didn't have a way to use it. 
right, let's Faithless Loot again. We're going to Fiery Temper Azusa. Ditch a Rift Bolt and a Fiery Temper. Fiery Temper on Azusa. Don't have an Ops in a Bayloth or a Finx. Okay, they didn't. All right, cool. Play a Swiss Spear. Oh, there's a Goblin Guide. Although Goblin Guide's going to give them a bunch of lands. No lands. And don't play an Ops in the Bayloth here. Spell Pierce. Okay, so we know there's a Spell Pierce on the horizon. But let's see if there's also an Ops in the Bayloth on the horizon. And there isn't. All right, let's Lava Spike you twice. They're probably going to Spell Pierce this. That is fine. And that should be lethal, I think. Or one short. One short of lethal. But I still have Bump and Bolt in hand. I don't have Black Mana, but any land will get me Black Mana, unless it's a basic mountain. Every other land in my deck will produce Black Mana. Besides the one, one other basic mountain. Cavern on Giant, but they don't have the mana for it. Do they have the Thrag Tusk? And they do have the Thrag Tusk, but a Black Source is still lethal. Alright, let's go with... Attack you and bolt you? That's that's literally game. Yep, that's game. Alright, so Amulet Titan, just a little bit too slow. Just a little bit too slow, and we got there. They kind of stumped a little bit. Just after playing Azusa, they had no additional lands to drop. That's a spot you don't want to be in. So we capitalized on that. We got a pretty good aggressive draw there, and we got there. So that's pretty awesome, beating one of the top tier decks. Given they got a bad draw. <laughs> got a game here with Rakdos 28 Bolt against Mateus F34. And we are on the draw. That hand does not have a second land. It is too clunky. So I have to mulligan. That's the downside about this burn deck is it's got to have to mulligan a lot. Blood Crypt to the bottom. So this burn deck can fizzle out pretty quickly, so we're going to hope that our opponents fetch and shock a lot of their own. Alright, so let's start on suspending a Rift Bolt. Unfortunately, we cannot kill the, the Noble Hierarch, and this deck does not have Searing Blaze, like a typical burn deck does. But Searing Blaze would have been awesome here. Mattery Shaper. So we're going against RG Eldrazi. Uh, I don't think they run Mainboard, mainboard Finks. I think I'm just going to throw all the damage at their face. I think we're just going to try to outrace them. Alright, let's go Lava Spike. And just pass and just start Fiery Tempering. All good, guys. You sent the Rakdos 28 Bolt on, your, on, on the first stream you saw. Oh, so it was Master Noob. Somebody sent it. Oh. Oh, so it was Master Noob. So we're playing Master Noob's deck. So congrats, Master Noob. You made it on the channel. Yep, found not Seer. So let's grab a Bood Crypt. Hey, what's up? A, bend, a band of pancakes. So opponent gets to take one of our fiery tempers, and we're unfortunately losing the race. But... You know, Alms of the Vein could be a good draw, actually. Alright, Lightning, Lava Spike. We'll just pass a turn and leave a Fiery Temper EOT. Maybe a Flame of Keld into... Like a Flame of Keld next turn into, like, Triple Burn Spell. The following turn would be what we can do to win. But yeah, I think we actually need Alms of the Vein to stay alive here. So let's fiery temper our opponent. Untap. Is it Alms of the Vein? It is not. And that be the game. Alright. Opponent just a little bit too aggressive. And their Thought Nuts here taking one of our dudes. Alright. On to sideboard. I don't think they're going to have any, any gain. Any life gain. I could bring in Syrian Bloods to hit like Noble Hierarchs and Mattery Shapers and stuff like that. And possibly, 
possibly, whatchamacallit's, um, I'm going to bring it in because I feel like they're going to, they're going to have stuff for us to hit. So let's cut one Flame of Keld, one Fiery Temper, one Faithless Looting, one, or let's cut another Fiery Temper, let's skewer the critics. Yeah, try it like that. I don't think they're going to have life gain. I don't think I need to bring in Reign of Gore. I mean, they could bring in, like, Thragtus or Obstinate Bailoff, but if they do, they know well. Okay, let's keep that. The Swift Spear can get in a lot of early damage. So let's go Aaron Mesa, Fetch and Shock, get a Blood Crypt. Unfortunately, these Rift Bolts don't trigger Prowess right away. What's a band of pancakes? I've seen a band of horses and a band of... Oh man, they bolt the Swiss beer. Alright, let's shock. And suspend some rift bolts. Next turn we can just go in on the Flame Akeld. You know, Flame Akeld suspending double rift bolt would be awesome. So that when it gets to its ult ability, it can just go all out. Alright, opponent doesn't have a whole lot going on here. I am not going to bolt their... I'm not going to bolt their um, Hierarch. I'm just going all at them. Alright, so Blackleaf Cliffs, Lava Spike you, Flame of Keld. So in Master Noob's version, he had Cathartic Reunion, which I didn't agree with. So uh, without your without your permission, Master Noob, because I, I forgot who submitted this deck, I changed it to Flame of Keld because Flame of Keld is just a better burn card. All right, Noble Hierk and Eldrazi Obligator. So they're going to go in with uh, five to the face here. They're going to try to race us. How did, how do we going to get to 15? We fetched and shocked. All right. Give me something other than lands. Okay, that's not bad. That's not bad. Um, so this only does red sources, so that's not going to work. So let's fetch. Get a mountain. Let's go with a bump in the night. And alms of the vein. All right. If it were up to me, honestly, I would splash white for Boros Charm and Lightning Helix. I think it's worth it. Honestly, you used his username for so long that you forgot where it came from. Probably a band of horses. Did you grow up listening to a lot of band of horses? I've listened to a lot of band of horses. Since before they were popular. Alright, so we're dead next turn. And uh, so we have to get a red source of damage here. Direct damage, not a creature. Oh, it's a black source of damage. It's a black source of damage. That's the downside. All right. Well, we got him to one, but our black sources of damage don't work with the Flame of Keld. Only the red sources do. So we needed to top a bolt there, and we didn't do it. I mean, we topped the bolt. It just wasn't the right bolt. So close, but Eldrazi got there. Let's move on to the next one. These games are going to go real fast. We got a game against Kenny Uwu. There's not supposed to be two O's there, man. There's supposed to be another U. What you doing? We're on the play with 28 Bolt, and yes, we will keep that. That is, that is a lot of Bolts. We need to draw two more if they fetch. If not, we have to draw three more Bolts, but we can do that. So let's start on a Suspended Rift Bolt. We also got to find like a Faithless Looting or a Flame of Kel to put this Fiery Temper to good use. Kiara was sick ramp. Yeah, Kiora is super good ramp. Like, that might be another, like, sick ramp piece to add with, like, Utopia, Sprawl, Arbor, Elf, Garrick. Kiora might be the fourth of the bunch. Because, like, Kiora also untaps Utopia, Sprawl, Lands. And does not die easily. Minus ones, and she starts at seven for three mana. She's likely not going to die. Your opponent attacking Kiora just feels feels bad for them because, you know, they're going to waste two turns attacking that thing, and I even might chump block and save it for a turn and draw, like, two cards off of it. Super value piece. Ur
Urborg. All right, so we're going up against eight rack. So let's discard a mountain. I don't need more than two lands here. I kind of want to just let them make me discard another card and then Madness of Fiery Temper. She's got the junk in the trunk. Yeah, she's got a fat butt. Okay, so part of me wants to... Yeah, I'm going to leave up uh, Fiery Temper because if they make me discard it, like if they range mine me here, that's fine. I can ditch Fiery Temper and just like cast it off madness. Come on. You can do it. Ranch mind me. Do it. They are not doing it. Alright, we'll play a mountain. Pass a turn. I'm still holding it up, dude. Like, if you don't make me discard cards, I will just cast it. Davriel? Lily, sure. Am I supposed to kill Lily, though? I don't think so. I don't think I have the time to do that. Alright, but we don't have... We're, we're very many bolts away from winning here, and they're going to be able to ult Lily and throw away half our lands any time now. So, it's going to be a shame when that happens. Let's play land. Flashback... Wait, oh, we don't have a looting? I thought we had a looting. Alright, might as well fetch... Pass a turn. So we just gotta top deck three more bolts. It's gonna be a little bit difficult. But then again, we got 28 bolts. So we have almost a perfect 50% chance of top decking a bolt. So those are pretty decent odds. Although, if they play like a rack here, we're gonna be dead really fast because they're gonna have guaranteed bolt every turn. Yeah, Davriel is guaranteed shock every turn. So let's hope to just top bolts for the rest of the game. That's a bump in the night. Alright, two more bolts. Two more bolts. We're only taking two per turn. If they start attacking with Mutaval, that's another damage. Oh wait, they now they can activate double Mutaval. Alright, so we're going to be dead really fast. Got to top bolts both of these turns here. Yeah, Davriel's 10 rack. <laughs> Or 12 rack if they want to go for that, but that's way too much rack. Come on, bolt. That is a bolt. That is a bolt. Alright, we got a top of bolt here. Got a top of bolt here. No swift spear. No swift spear. No land. No flame of Keld. No swift spear. No land, no flame of kelp. Faithless looting is even fine. Faithless looting is even fine. Because if I faithless looting and ditch a madness spell. Alright, let's choose pile two. Keep our dual lands. Plays another Lily. If I were them, I would have gotten with the Mute of All to ensure victory. I think that they just gave us another turn to live by doing that. Yeah, they just I think they just gave us gave us another turn to live. Come on, burn spell. That's a bolt! And that'll do it. Oh man, I'm even salty at myself. I'm even salty at myself there. Because yesterday I entered a modern tournament. I went two and one. My one loss was to budget mono red burn. And I, w I had super lethal on board game three, and he just needed to top deck a bolt to win, and he got it. He was empty handed too. Needed to top a bolt to win, and he got it. And I just did that to my opponent. I feel so bad. Destructive Revelry get in here. I don't think they're going to have life gain. I'm going to put Reina Gore. Uh, they're going to have like 
um, and snaring bridge, no reason to bring the goblin guide. Uh, they're also going to have like smallpox and stuff, so I'm not going to bring in that. But if they have, um, what do you call that guy? The lifelinker? Gifted Aetherborn? That could be annoying. Although I don't think they're going to have that because I don't think they're on a budget. So bring the revelries, cut a flame and killed. Cut a Faithless Looting card. Uh, Faithless Looting is card disadvantage here, and I don't think I want... You know, Flame McHale drawing us two cards is pretty good. Uh, Faithless Looting, honestly, feels like... Like, since it's card disadvantage, it's, it's less appealing. So yeah, I think we're just going to run it like that. And I think we're supposed to be on the on the draw, right, against eight rackers. But we're burned, though. So if since we're burned, I think that prompts me to be on the play. So yeah, normally if we were playing mid range or something, I would just be on the draw against eight rack. But since we're burned, I think this is one of that that rare scenario. Somebody in the comment section on YouTube, let me know who like has experience with eight rack and burn. If I, like, even when I'm burn, like, if I was playing, like, Affinity, Burn, or some kind of combo deck, do I always just want to be on the draw against 8-Rack? I don't think so. I think if you're playing a deck that seriously wants to be on the play, I think you just take the play no matter what. Okay, opponent chose to be on the play. Alright, well, that works. Yeah, opponent knows that they gotta be on the play. Funeral Charm. Alright, let's discard... Probably Skewer. Oh, there's another Flame of Keld. Alright, let's fetch and shock Blood Crypt. Oh, I could have gotten a basic mountain. Yeah, I could have gotten a basic mountain because they have Urborg. Alright, oh well. If I thought about it for one more second, I would have caught myself. Waste Knot. Oh, do they gain life off Waste Knot? I don't think they do. They don't. Alright, cool. Rift Bolt. Go at your face. Play a mountain, suspend a rift bolt. Suspend a rift bolt. Alright, I can draw a couple cards off the flame and keld now, which would be fine. It'll be okay if they like wrench mine me here or something. Got Lily? Sure. That is okay by me. I will ditch a flame and keld. Go from there. You're in love. What's up, Phil? How you doing, Phil? <laughs> Alright, so Wooded Foothills. I want to get my Stomping Ground now, just in case I top deck um, Destructive Revelry. Going Swift Spear. Going with Flame of Keld. Get that Prowess. Ditch our hand, our non existent hand. Go to combat. Let's attack our opponent and not pay attention to the Lily. Lily's going to make us sack the Swiss Spear, likely. But I need this uh, Flame of Hell's ult ability to get there. Play another Mute Vault, another Luda Vault. And they push so they don't have to. They can start picking up Lily and make a sack of land. Alright, come on. What you gonna draw, Flame of Keld? Give me some good stuff. Give me three bolts. Give me three bolts here. Come on, Flame of Keld. Give me three bolts. Three bolts. Just do it. Just do it. Aw, uh, Arid Mesa. Okay. Uh, yeah, let's, just, let's do that. Fetch a basic mountain. Whatever, whatever. Um, black. Alms of the Vein. Skewer with Spectacle on you. You're at three. All right. Any spell. Any spell off the top. Any bolt. Any bolt. They have no way to gain life right now. The Rack, sure, we're going to die pretty fast. But also, they're going to die pretty fast. Oh, come on. Even even uh, Monastery Swift Spear is lethal. Because Flame of Kelvin is about to ult. Come on. Oh, it's a, it's a land. It's a land. Uh-oh. 
We'll play the land because if not, they're just going to make me discard it with Lily. We're going to take an extra damage off the rack though. Three, four, five, six, seven. So we're going to go to two. Unless they play another rack here, then we're dead. Yep, get some of the Muta Vaults. We're going to two here. Let's see if they would like to... Okay, you know what doesn't get it? Destructive Revelry. Oh, please don't give me Destructive Revelry. Please don't give me Destructive Revelry here. Are they ulting Lily? I think ulting Lily doesn't do anything here. Any bolt! Any bolt! Any bolt! Any bolt! Any bolt, please? Uh, I think I'm going to fetch and thin. I think it matters here. I'm going to one. I'm going to one. Oh, that's a skewer! Oh, I think that's game. That's game. Domia for three. Oh, I said I hate this card a million times and it just wins me the game. Oh, thank you, skewer. Thank you, skewer. You're not so bad after all. You are a three mana burn spell most of the time, but we got there against eight rack. They didn't make us discard enough. Sweet. Another win in the bank for Rakdos 28 Bolt. Let's grab another game. Got a game here against Jock87. And yes, we'll be on the play. And that is a pretty slow hand. That's a lot of lands. We've been getting pretty flooded with this deck. So Swiss Beer into nothing, into Flame Mikhail ditching Alms of the Vein. Yeah, I think I'm going to mull that. Oh, that's even worse. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Guess I'm keeping that. Land on top. Alright, I'm keeping the land and I'm not fetching because I need the land. Alright, Jock87. What you doing? Oh, it's Tron. It's Tron. Alright. So let's go. Let's actually fetch here. Shock of Blood Crypt. Fetch here. Shock of Blood Crypt. Lava Spike. Skewer. Alright, opponent might just be quick enough. Do they have Tron? They do have Tron. Alright, so that's... That's on curve Tron. See if they got a Worm Coil or something. Alms of the Vein. They did not crack the map. They were leaving up Warping Whale, perhaps, but they didn't use it. They had natural Tron anyways. They didn't even need to crack the map. And Trinosphere is pretty good. So they're Karn, they're Karn Tron. Yeah, Karn the Great Creator. And now they can go fetch the Lattice. So we die. So GG. On the sideboarding, we get Destructive Revelry. Do I even want to start to revive though? Okay, Reign of Gore stops Thrag Tusk. I definitely want Goblin Guide here, because they don't have removal. So I definitely want Goblin Guide. The question is, do I want to start to revive in Reign of Gore? The question is... Or the, the answer is probably no. Let's cut... Faithless Looting, Flame McKeld, Fiery Temper, Skewer. For Goblin Guide. But now... Destructive Revelry, yay or nay. Turn two, it's actually pretty good to like blow up a map. I guess that's reason enough, but there's going to be a lot of situations where it has no targets and we're just stuck with it. And that's one of the problems, but I think I just submit it like this. Blue Ponza was sweet. Thank you. What's your name? Noah, Tim Noah Tim Saya. Yes, I will be on the play, and this hand is good. Let's keep that. Shock of Bood Crypt, and let's just Lava Spike you. Oh, I could have suspended a Rift Bolt. I should have done that, but it doesn't make a difference. Alright, there's a map. Fetch and shock a boot crypt here. See if opponent has on curve Tron again. 
Bump in the night. Suspend a rift bolt. Pass turn. Opponent does have on curve Tron. That's a shame. All right, rift bolt comes off. Goes to their face. There's a swift spear. So play a swift spear. Lava spike you. Get a prowess trigger. Go attacking. Down to six. All right, can we top a burn spell? They didn't crack them. Oh, they didn't even need it. They did the same thing as the last game. They didn't need to crack the map again because they just had natural Tron again. And now they have Trinosphere and we can't cast anything. Uh, opponent. Opponent had the exact same start as last time. Rigged. Rigged. Cheater. Cheater alert. All right, well, I have to I have to attack Tron or else it's going to get out of Lattice. So, Lava Spike has to go at Karn. Go at Karn. Can't let it get out of Lattice. Yep, and if they have a Worm Coil, you got us. Man, why does the opponent keep getting the nut? Opponent nutted twice. That's a lot. And now they have Warbs of Warding. Oh, opponent is nutting. Oh, and Lodestone Golem. Oh, nut. The absolute nut, dude. The absolute nut. Tron getting there. I've got to get one more. Got to get at least one more. Let's do it. Yo, what up guys, Marin here with your typical per video speed up session. Usually we speed up the longest game in the video, and this was the longest game. So we end up going up against a black-white deck that plays Stitcher Supplier and mills over a Cruel Celebrant, and they play a Cruel Celebrant. So at first we thought they were aristocrats, but after seeing that they're milling themselves, I immediately knew that they were trying to rally the ancestors. At that point they play another Blood Artist, and I just know that there's no way they're going to gain too much life. I concede. Go to the next game, bring in Reign of Gore, and we draw it in our hand, but we get so much burn that the Reign of Gore just kind of sits there until this turn we play it and every time they're to gain a life they lose that much life instead and then this next turn they end up playing a Dragon's Claw so it says whenever we cast a spell a red spell they gain a life but instead they lose a life whenever we cast a red spell so they just hurt themselves there because of Reign of Gore so that's pretty awesome we go on to the next game and they get Stitcher Supplier and mill over two Drell's Messengers and a Zulaport Cutthroat so from there I know that they are black white solemnity combo now, if you don't know what black white Solemnity combo is, basically Solemnity is a three-mana enchantment that says creatures cannot get counters. So if you have a Sarah Seer or some kind of sack outlet, a Solemnity in play, and a Drops Messenger, you sacrifice it infinitely and drain your opponent for infinite damage. Also, if you have a Finx, you can sack that infinitely to gain infinite life. They have so much stuff in the graveyard, so I know if they ever find a Rally of the Ancestors, I just die. I get them very close to being dead here. I bolt them a whole bunch of times, get them down to five. They rally, or they return to the ranks, get some stuff back, and they get so many Blood Artist effects on the table that I just concede because I know they're going to gain way too much life. So GG to Black White uh, Rally. That's a pretty cool deck. All right, so we got a total of two wins. This deck, I think, was pretty much a dud because I think, okay, we talked about this all throughout the gameplay video. I don't know if uh, I'll include all the talky parts in the video, but pretty much what I kept going over is that um, all our burn spells, since we're pretty creatureless, usually burn decks rely on their early beats with their creatures to get in the first big chunk of damage before they finish their opponent off with burn spells. So since we don't have much creatures at all, and the creature is likely they're just going to have the removal spell for it, and we don't have a second one to follow up with. Um, we need a, just to have the perfect hand in order to win with this deck. We need to have, we need to not get flooded whatsoever, because every single point of damage counts, and there you have no time to waste burn spells on opponents' creatures. Like if you're bolt, you always bolt the bird on turn one, but with this deck you really can't. You got to have every burn spell, because you know. They come in multiples of three. Three, six, nine, twelve, uh, fifteen, eighteen, and then hope they fetched a couple times. That's five burn spells. We're most likely going to cast like five or six burn spells in a single game. 
and we're likely going to be interacted with and or countered and or not draw enough burn spells and or be dead before we cast enough burn spells because a lot of them are situational and clunky. We're not always going to get them off in the situation we want to. Like Alms of the Vein, we've probably hard casted it more often than we've madnessed it. Same with Fiery Temper. Skewers just sometimes is not active. And if you want to get prowess off Swiss Spear, too bad because you gotta have Swiss Spear hit them first, so you can't get prowess off of that. Uh, Rift Bolt's delayed, so they even have another turn to kill you. So there's a lot of these factors where everything just needs to go exactly right for this deck to work. Honestly, I, I really building this or putting this deck together. Uh, this was Master Noob's list. He was in the chat earlier, and he's always in the chat. So you probably noticed me uh, chatting with him during gameplay videos when he's in the chat. And he was the one who submitted this deck. And um, like I honestly, before the video, wanted to just like switch up the deck and put put white in for like Boros Charm. And um, Goblin Guides, honestly, they just belong in the main board. They just belong in the main board. Same with Eidolon of the Great Rebel. They get in so much damage that it just puts so so much of a so much of a load off on having to top deck burn spells because you can just get there a lot better when you have your creature beats, honestly. Uh Reign of Gore was cool. I liked Reign of Gore a lot. So yeah, my final verdict is I'm not a fan of Creatureless Burn. If I was gonna run Creatureless Burn, I might try to run like I said, white for Boros Charm and Helix. And I would probably run Needle Drop, since every point of damage counts. I would want every bit of damage I can get in there. And I would honestly go like down to 19 lands too, because like I would just want my card quality to just be all burn spells. I just want to top deck nothing but burn spells. And I don't think that we really have the time for like Flame Held, Looting, and Madness spells. I think it'd be better, if you're going to go Creatureless Burn, it'd be better to just go Boros. But yeah, we talked about that idea earlier. Like, what if you built a burn deck that was just all, like, Helix effects? Like, Alms of the Vein gains three. Uh, Sovereign's Bite gains three. Lightning Helix gains three. War Leader's Helix even gains four. Like, that'd be a hilarious burn deck to see just how that would work out. Honestly, like, against Control and against, um... Like, against control and, and against combo, it would do absolutely nothing, and it'd be worse than traditional burn by far. And even against Tron, it'd be worse. Um, but against, like, mid-range and aggro, it'd be hilarious, just because it would just work out so well, I would think. But yeah, there's funny things you could do with burn. Like, back in the day, we tried Spark Trooper. You guys hated that one, because that was more of a meme than anything. And, uh, yeah. So let me know in the comments down below, what would you do to make Creatureless Burn work? Additionally, let me know what deck you want to see for a future episode of Fan Fridays. You can comment your deck list down below or email it to me or DM me on social media. Social media links are in the description if you want to go follow me there, stay up to date on stuff. And um, uh, go check out the Twitch if you want to catch the action live. Link is in the description as well. Uh, we currently stream Magic the Gathering gameplay every Saturday, Monday, and Wednesday at 4 p.m. Pacific time. And thank you very much to all my patrons, and thank you, TCG Player, for the brand new partnership, and thank you, NTG Online Store, for the sponsorship as of late. And Tron Emote is incoming, and I'm going to get it out of here. Thank you very much for watching. I'll catch you in the next video. Peace out.